A Scion of Many Worlds I was wondering how long it would take you to arrive. Tell me, how goes communication with your masters? I'm certain they're not happy you let me go. The Foza had announced herself to one of the guard posts just outside the valley. Jasper had gone out to meet her in person. If she's hostile, then they're well away from non-combatants, and while she will cut loose, so will he. I'm not here for them. I'm here for me. The Foza woman answers and Jasper's eyebrows go up slightly. Really? You were that close to your cousin? He asks, and she glares at him. No answer comes. Fine, then. You want knowledge, right? She doesn't answer. She just glares at him. You want to know how to properly make a communicator right? Still nothing. I may be capable of plucking the thoughts from your head, but that doesn't mean I like doing it. He bluffs, and she takes a slight step back. Look, I'm not trying to be the bad guy here. But with so many forces trying to impose their will on this world and clashing with my own goals and intentions, I have to be careful. Do you or do you not want to learn? I do, she says, and he mentally cheers. He has an in. Now he just needs to keep pushing at it without driving her off. Then follow me, he says, and he turns to lead her into the valley still perfectly aware of her positioning and even facial expression. Her hand twitches to a hidden knife, but she doesn't draw it. She knows that he may be unarmed, but she's also aware of the quotes around that train of thought. She says nothing as she follows him further in. Looking around and taking in the many changes, a frown developing and deepening as she regards the warriors and troops. Pardon. Did I forget to introduce myself as the Martial Master of the Star Seekers? Because that's my official title among them. Are they of your undaunted? Potentially. They have the basic understanding and are pushing themselves as required. But among them, not all of them will want to continue the path. Being undaunted is as much a combat philosophy as a life philosophy, as well as a political statement. What are the undaunted? She states rather than asks, but he smiles. She's taking the bait. An army, small by the standards of the galaxy, but vast and powerful by the standards of Lacron. So a small army is coming here. A small army is coming to save this place, Jasper corrects. Of course it's only small by the comparison that there are countless trillions of souls across the galaxy. We don't need saving, the Foza says in a sulky tone. How old are you? He asks, and then clams up. She still wants to keep information from him? Fine. Well, regardless, I doubt you're older than a century. Only that idiot snake and the most withered crones reach a century. Be nice about that poor girl. She saw everything she knew and loved destroyed as a small child and was forced to build from nothing. Jasper chides her before grinning. Now, the undaunted are to the last very young by comparison, but there are medical techniques, which we are bringing, to allow anyone to live as long as the Empress. I myself have slept for hundreds of years. I was centuries old in body when I first came to Lacron. Granted, most of that was in a deep sleep, one during which my mother was awake for. So what? You're some ancient thing here to save us all? Some grand chosen being of prophecy and portent? Wow, there is a lot of bitterness in her tone. Don't be ridiculous. My coming here was a series of accidents and odd choices. There was no prophecy pulled into this. No higher hand in these affairs unless you count that of my mother or my own. He chides and she looks a little surprised. She looks away to watch some of the troops in the midst of drill exercise and frowns again. So why are they doing those things? They're building muscle, growing stronger bit by bit and practicing. I refuse to believe you don't know what practicing is and what it's important for. Why not just use the axiom? The axiom can enhance things and make them stronger. It's a powerful multiplier. But that's just it right there. Right where? It's a multiplier. If you start off with something stronger, then you get a better result with the same amount of effort. 
I may have built up my body with axiom, but I've also pushed it and pushed it and pushed it, fully understanding what I can do as I keep searching for my limit and then pushing past it. Jasper explains, and her frown is much more pronounced now. Perhaps the previous ones were subconscious, and this is the first deliberate one? Please explain, she states once more, not asking, but commanding. He has to resist snorting. He has her curious, and he has her not even twitching towards the knife despite how tempting his back must be. Also, she can probably hear the armor he has on under the cloak. It's hard as hell to make plate mail for an Orthani, the wings get in the way, and the fur gets into everything. But with Axiom, it was easy enough. Granted, it was more like banded mail with it hanging off the inside of his shirt. If you're only capable of lifting 25 pounds with one arm, and you use a mode of Axiom to make yourself 10 times as mighty and lift 250, then the same amount of axiom with a stronger arm will allow you to lift more and more. I think I understand. It's about using axiom as an aid and not the central part, she says, and he nods. Come on, walk beside me, not behind me. It's easier to speak that way. He invites her, and he cancels her frown through his antenna, and she wrestles with it. Then she walks up beside him. He starts to walk back into the valley again. What are your plans? She asks straight up. I am preparing this world as best as I can for when rescue finally arrives. Thousands of years ago, your ancestors were lost in this place. You should have been rescued then, but it's only coming now. I apologize for the delay, but I was only made aware of the problem some weeks ago. What? That got her. Her ears outright twitch. I apologize for the delay, but I was only made aware of the problem some weeks ago. He repeats and her ears twitch again, trying to find some hint of deception in him. Here's the fun part of a righteous manipulation. Another benefit to standing on moral high ground he hadn't mentioned to Elder Elise. You can draw others in with a foundation that's stable. You believe that, she states in a shocked tone. Yes. When your ancestors came to this world, a great disaster laid you all low. It should have been corrected within months at most. But it wasn't, and that was simply wrong. A failure of the galaxy's people. Unfortunately, the ancestors of the Undaunted were in much the same position you find yourselves in now, if not worse off for a lack of axiom or ancient secrets to aid them. Were they? It took a thousand years to advance such. It's been a thousand years and you've only descended. He volleys back before he can stop himself. No, that was the wrong thing to do. He should not have said that. He needs to lure her in, not push her away. He needs an in on her empire and she's perfect for it. Descended! We've risen up after that idiot serpent kept failing to... She begins before stopping. Was that a blurt? Apparently as she seemed furious with herself. She was a child when everything was lost. She was never trained to pick things apart. She kept promising help any time now, and it never came. Now you promise the same thing, and these idiots believe you. Ah, you feel abandoned, he says, and she looks away from him. If that wasn't hitting the nail on the head, then he doesn't know what the saying means. You're not forsaken, not by me and not by my people. I don't believe you. She states and he nods. Fair enough. You've been lost for a thousand years. I don't expect that to just go away on my word alone. You've got all these women tricked. She almost spat that bit out. Is this personal for her or is it a cultural thing to take their circumstances personally? Feeling enlightened by looking down on others spitefully is a rather cruel way to organize a society. It's also a fast way to make your society the enemies of others fairly consistently. Trick nothing. I shared my memories with them and taught them how to fight. I brought physical proof to these people and taught them secrets lost so long that they could not be found anywhere upon Lacron. They've seen my proof, so they believe. Would you like to see it? No. I want the information on how you breathe life into stillborn librariums, nothing more or less. 
Ah, so you can stab me in a clear conscience. I understand, Jasper replies. What? Him directly bringing up and dismissing her vengeful urges was clearly not on the schedule for things she was ready to deal with. Don't think I'm unaware that you want to kill me for the sake of your cousin. You'll probably aim for it to be poetic in some way, matching the mark she made on me, but with a deadly result to prove that she should have won when she went after me. He states and she's openly staring at him now. But you're still bringing me in, letting me close. If not for the armor, I would have stabbed you already. You would have tried. Whether it would have worked or not is a matter of debate. But what isn't up for debate is that you haven't actually done anything yet. You haven't attacked me. You have not hurt me. So I give you a chance instead. I don't understand. I didn't expect you to, he states. She's off balance. She's reconsidering things and generally has everything but stab him and ignore his words going through her head. She's paying attention but not to find a place to shank him now, which means she's set up. Jasper hopes that the lessons both Sir Philip and Madame Stepanova have been imparting to him pay off. He leads her to the lab where numerous women are poring over their notes to put together communicators. Using Axiom to blend raw ingredients into proper parts and then putting them together according to the blueprints. That, these, the Foza says as she heads up to one of the completed communicators and activates it. It goes through its startup sequence in moments and then is fully online. Where was this one recovered? Hey, that wasn't recovered. I made that. Sister Bellwether protests and the Foza stares at her, then starts fiddling with the communicator. Should I have put a password on that? Probably. Jasper answers before the Foza sucks in a shocked breath. Her brain has an absurd amount of activity going on as the woman is clearly thinking hard and fast. How? the Foza asks, and Jasper grins. How about your name first? Jasper asks, and she just glares at him for a moment. I am Yinis Damaris. She was Agris Damaris. Yinis introduces herself before all but spitting her cousin's name at Jasper. If you'd like, there will be lessons on how to make communicators from scratch soon enough. A new group will be taught tomorrow, and the full lesson is to be able to not only copy all the blueprints and use them to make several, but then to program them all, or breathe life as you call it. I don't need to know how to put them together. I need to know how to breathe life into the librariums, Yanis states, and Jasper chuckles. There are two main ways of doing so. First is to build it from scratch. This is difficult time-consuming and very, very prone to failure, and you will fail many times before you even start to get things right. But learning that method will teach you how to make root-level changes to a system to let you alter them from the deepest recesses out. Really? Yes, think of it less like a living thing and more an immensely complicated tapestry. Each thread must be spun, dyed, properly placed and woven into the whole, if you do not catch your mistakes until much later, then you must unweave a great deal of the tapestry to remove or alter the mistake you have made. And the other way? There are ways to copy the systems into a blank device. Do you have printing presses in your homelands? Some. I do not know much about them. That will do, though. Are you aware that printing presses allow you to make many copies of a book in a short time? Yes. The second method is more akin to using a printing press to copy a book than copying it all out by hand, except that you also have to personally make the ink that you're copying and hunt down a new bird each and every time you find yourself in need of a new quill. You're exaggerating. Somewhat, but that's to impress the tediousness and time consumption needed to breathe life. He reaches up and draws the air quotes. Into a librarium, without copying. Like any skill, those who are learned at it can do things much more swiftly and easily, but it really, really helps to have the knowledge of others to assist. I see, show me how. There will be lessons tomorrow, free to any and all. 
This is nearing the end of their teaching and they're just getting more and more comfortable creating these devices. Electronic repair, maintenance, and construction are extremely useful skills, more so when we get back in contact with the rest of the galaxy. All right, that is enough, Yinus outright states with a growl that he feels in his bones. Ah, he just crossed a line somewhere. How so? he asks, priming his axiom. This is a very, very bad place for a fight. If she lets out a sonic scream, then it will reverberate off the walls and hit the people here. Even if he hardens himself, there are others to look out for and fighting here is deadly. Do you think... She begins to roar with axiom power. His arm snaps out and he wraps his claws around her throat before ripping at the axiom to force a huge teleport straight up. Did you think that I was some helpless child? That you could suddenly start to attack and not have to face the consequences? He asks in a low tone to the now struggling Foza. It can barely be heard over the wind. He went up. There are clouds under them and Eridus Valley is a tiny dot below. The curvature of the world can be seen from this height, and the thin air will lower the power of any attack she cares to try. She can feel the brutal edges of his claws digging in, and most importantly, she can feel that only his own axiom expression is keeping her alive. If she attacks him now, she falls a very, very long way. Even if she doesn't fall, his own focus will waver and her throat gets sliced into. She grabs onto his wrist while whimpering, going from demanding and furious to terrified and helpless in a blink. Stop squirming. You don't want to slip and cut yourself. 